Well, good afternoon, everybody. Right at noon. It is right at noon. Wednesday, May 19th, 2021. Beautiful day. Beautiful day. Uh, I'm here in Michigan. My name is Hector Hernandez, and this is the Canine Man Show of First Class Dog Training. And I also do public speaking at HectorSpeaks.com. Um, I got some good news for everybody. I don't, I don't know if it's good news. It's good news for me, at least. Um, I am totally booked 110% for June. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to be doing two shows in June um, on the days that I rest. And this is kind of a nice thing for me to decompress. So I'm going to do two shows on Wednesday in June. Uh, next week is going to be one show, but in June, I'm going to be doing two shows, one at 12 and another one at 7. Now, those shows are only, be, are only going to be consist of, of Ask the Trainer. That's it. Just ask the trainer. Ask me anything. Blow my head away with questions. That's going to be June, all right? Because um, I'm so busy... I'm not going to be able to do what I normally am able to do. Um, all right, so last week's show was a down command. Anybody that was in my obedience class last weekend got to see that firsthand. There was a dog that I pressured down just a little bit and went into extreme panic mode. And I mean panic. Thought you were going to kill him. So we had to teach him how to relax in the face of pressure. That was last week's topic, down command. It was a good parallel to make. Um, there was a few people there that watched my show, so they really got to see how it worked. Uh, we had a good conversation at the end. But anyways, today's show is the come command. It's all motivational. All motivational. This is not an impulse control command today. The, or show, excuse me. This is not an impulse control show. This is teaching the dog when you hear the word come, or you could use hear. I'm going to use, uh, for this show, I'm going to use the come, but you could also use hear, he, uh, uh, anything just to attach it to a behavior. Remember, you're attaching the word to a behavior to understand what is meant. Dogs don't listen, they hear. You're gonna, they're going to hear the word come, and they're going to come to you. Now, you can also use a whistle in combination with the come command, so eventually you can use just the whistle. I like to use, just remember, there's three ways of communicating with your dog, okay? There's verbal, nonverbal, all right? And then also with a combination of the two together, all right? There's, there's the, the double command. So I could do the whistle, and then the hand signal. I could do the come command and the hand signal, or I could do either or. But you're gonna get them to learn a word with the behavior. I got some good video. I got some good video. I took my Monday one-on-ones and I add and I and I had them do a few things for my show. Sometimes I'll do that. I'll I'll get my one-on-ones and I'll ask them, hey, I'm doing a show on this. Do you mind doing this? Most of the time, 99% of the time, they don't have a problem with that. The only ones I can't do it with are the uh, non-disclosure one-on-ones. Sometimes I'll get somebody who uh, wants to remain anonymous. Uh, it could be somebody that's important. could be a political figure. could be uh, someone else that flies. So I, do, I normally can't do it with them. But Monday, unfortunately, all three of my one-on-ones were just, just great. And you're going to see them. You're going to see Jennifer. You're going to see Hannah. You're going to see Darlene. You're going to see all three of them on my show. Great people. And you're even going to see one of my audience members, Mike Butts. Uh, he came over and we did a little bit of off-leash. Uh, so anyways, it's going to be the come command. I want to thank everybody for being here. But don't leave just when I start thanking people. I heard some people say, Hector, when you start thanking people, I start... I, I tune you out. Don't tune me out. This is very important. Very important for you guys that I say hi to you, Jacqueline the, uh, the, uh, Dominguez. Very happy. Lisa Riley, I'm glad, I'm glad you're back. 
Uh, and of course, Michael Bucks is here. I know I seen Chris Schultz here. I know I did. He sent me a text and I got to review it. I reviewed his text. Maybe a good, good conversation to have for a show. All right. Uh, Tanya Ford is here. Tanya, I hope your dog's doing good. I know we had some issues with stress. I hope we answered them. Feel free to text me and f let me know. I have about two to three day uh, um, wait on text. I have about a week, week and a half on uh, emails. And I have about a four to five day on, on uh, Facebook message uh, return. So be patient, people. Be patient. I'm enjoying what I do. Uh, Renee Hake, thank you for being here. I hope Amigo's doing good. Rebecca Hendrick, I think I seen Brooke Baker on here too. All right. Uh, Tammy Goldley, hello, hello. Glad you're here. Mara Ellen, thank you for being here. Uh, Nikki Olson, uh, Iveson, thank you for being here. Appreciate that. Rebecca, after speaking with you yesterday, I have watched all your videos. So much good information. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome, uh, Rebecca Hendrick. Listen, this is why I do these shows. A lot of good, free, free information out there. I've gotten some feedback from trainers, and they're thanking me. I like that. Now, here's what I tell them. What can you teach me? Please teach me something. I had in my class, my obedience class, this last class, I had a few people teach me something. You guys, that's what we're here for. When I stop learning, you can call me stupid. I'm serious. When I stop learning from other people, just call me stupid. That's ridiculous. Anybody can teach you something. Whether it be patience, whether it be unconditional love, whether it be tolerance, whether it be something, they will teach you something there. All right, um, Lizette Basquez, thank you for being here. Uh, make sure I didn't mi miss anybody. I hope I didn't. Uh, Margo Maddo, thank you for being here. Uh, Marion Yaps, thank you for being here. Now, remember, I got a lot of replays that they show. And remember, I love these shows because I can send these out to people who, who are having trouble with a command. And then I can just give them a few tips. Now, again, this isn't a competition, a, comp uh, a uh, show for competition people. They're more of a, a mechanical, not, not functional group. Mechanical because they're, they're, they're doing it for show. They want it to look really, really good. So they're doing things mechanically. I'm not saying that those, some dogs can't be functional, but in most cases, this is why they have their, their competitions in a controlled environment. There's no distractions because it's got to be mechanical. That's not real life, and you know it isn't, you guys. You know it's not. When, we, when we're dealing with a pet, we need functional. We need a dog to come to us in the face of distractions. We need a dog to submit to us in the face of aggression. We need the dogs to, man, we need to manage our dogs so they don't become destructive in our home. That all has to do with a dog learning to be functional. Today's topic is the come command. How do we teach the come command? But let's talk about some mistakes that you can make with the come command, that you could ruin the come command, aside from the stay command. Okay, we talked about with the stay command, you correct the dog when they come to you, or you don't call the dog to you until you got the stay command down. We've talked about the stay command, but I'm talking about mistakes when you've talked, when you've already elicited the word come, and then you make mistakes. What are those mistakes? What do they, what do they mean? What, what, what do they happen? What happens to those dogs when you say the word and you make a mistake? Uh, Lisette Basquez, Shadow's doing well. Oh, you better. Ah, uh, that's a great news. Uh, and Tanya Ford says he's doing great. I will provide updates for you. You know what, Tanya? Send me a video because remember, most of his behavior had to do with me looking at him on who he was, not what he was, who he was. We talk about that, and I talk about this intensively with families, with friends. Who is your friend? Not what is your friend, who is your friend? There's certain friends of mine who drink. Listen, I know they drink, so I'm, I'm not who they are. I'm not going out with them when they go out, because I don't drink, and I don't like being around drunk people. So I know that, but they, they don't stop being my friends because I don't like what they do, or I don't agree with what they do. They don't stop being my friends because of that. They just don't. All right, so get to know who your dog is, not what your dog is. 
Uh, Vicky Roberts, my dog will listen indoors when outside all bets are off. He is strong will and treats do not work. Oh, Vicky, I'm glad you said that right now in the beginning. Ooh, I'm glad you said that. Great timing. Now, the reason why I say great timing is because this is why I don't use treats a lot outside when it comes to the come command. You'll see there is a method that you can use with treats. There's no question about it. But I like to use praise a lot. And remember, this, this show today is not impulse control, Vicki. This is teaching the come command. So there's going to be some tips here that are going to help you, Vicki. No question about that. But you need a session in impulse control. Remember, when a dog's running after a squirrel, that is self-rewarding. The treat will not balance that. I don't care how much treat you use. I don't care high value of a treat you use. I don't care how much hunger suppression you do. That dog is still going after that squirrel. In fact, if you hunger suppress him, he's going to think the squirrel is food. <laughs> think about that. Instinct is self-rewarding. And this is something that B.F. Skinner didn't address in the Pavlov method, he, an experiment. He didn't address instinct. He didn't address breed. He didn't address temperament. He didn't, under, he didn't address the moral issue. If the dog chases a squirrel, he kills that squirrel. To the squirrel, it's not murder. How about if the squirrel goes, how about if the dog goes after a person? How about that one? See, that's something that we have to address with dog aggression. Right now, the narrative around the country is what? Is, is redirect. With, I, I don't even want to go into that because I've gotten more dogs with that issue than I, you could imagine. Now, with the come command, again, this is not theory. This is not a thought experiment. This is not theory. This is works in practice. And one of the things as a trainer, Vicki, is I need to make sure that my dog meets that standard that I am giving to people. So when people say to me, wow, Hector, your dog is well trained. He should be. He's a reflection of my training. He should be. And that goes for us too as homeowners, as pet owners, as trainers. Our dogs are a reflection of our training. Our dogs are a reflection of our training. This is why with strong-willed dogs, it's hard to address the come command today because they need follow-through and no arguing, and usually a strong-willed dog has good, high instincts. It's hard to address that. Very hard. You gotta follow through and not argue. And with parents, we discipline with love, and we become teachers. That means we talk to them. A little different when dog, we're moral creatures, dogs are not, all right? So let's talk about the come command, some most common mistakes that we make. Good timing, Vicky. You're going to notice I don't use a lot of treats today, but I will if I need to. Again, puppies, all treat training under five months. There is no reason why you shouldn't be using treats under five months. And um, the exception to the rule is going to be a dominant puppy or a, a puppy who's just not getting it, who's just not getting it, very strong-willed puppy, all right? But for the, in short, you've got to teach the method using positive reinforcement. You have to. If the puppy is too young and you add stress, you're gonna shut him down and he's gonna, you're gonna get the blowback is gonna be negative. All right, and we're gonna talk about that right now because we're gonna go into the most common mistakes that you can make with the come command. The most, stomachs you, the most common mistakes you can make with the come command is give command when the dog is running away. Do you realize how many dogs think come means to run away? Why do they do that? Because you're given the command when they're running away. If you're given the command when they run away, they're thinking come means to run away. Remember, dogs don't listen, they hear. You're better off saying leave. <laughs> Get out of here. Because they're running away when you're saying that. Now, if they understand the word, then you can correct them, but you got to follow through. Give the command when the dog is running away. That is a mistake. The second mistake you can make is play the chase game. 
when they're puppies, we often play this game where we're playing with them and we're dodging them back and forth. They're running and they're, and then, and we're playing them like we're a dog. Don't do that because the play, the chase game, the dog thinks you're playing when we do the come command. You're going to confuse the dog. You're going to, you're going to call the dog and the dog's going to start playing with you. You guys, there's some cases there's, there's where your stomach just drops if the dog leaves and there's a car coming or there you're near a highway. Oh my goodness. It, listen, this is one of the reasons why I, I, I developed the method that I did for the come command off leash because I myself, I myself took a trainer's word that the dog was trained off lead and it wasn't. And I literally watched it get hit by a car. I did. And I, I vowed to myself that I would learn a method to make sure that my dog came to me when I called it. I made sure that that dog's life meant something to me. It was very important. Third, correct the dog when they gets to you. If you correct the dog when it gets to you, you're going to break trust. Hell, you might get the dog to run farther away from you. All right? Correct the dog when it gets to you. That is a big mistake. Big mistake. Fourth, correct the dog when you catch it. If you do catch it in someone's backyard, you do catch it underneath the deck, you do catch it in the house, don't correct it. Don't correct it. Don't take it personal. In, in, in three and four, if you use your hands, now you're going to see hands as a weapon. The dogs will. Try that with an unforgiving dog and see what happens. Try that with an unforgiving dog and see what happens. One time, using your hands as a weapon, it will never forget it. It will never forget it. And now you're going to spend the rest of your life building trust than you are even uh, just that one uh, emotional traumatic event. When I, when I say this with a sensitive dog, the parallel that I make to some people is, oh, okay, have someone cheat on you. See if you don't forget that. You're going to remember that because you're sensitive because it's a boundary. Dogs, when you use your hands on a sensitive dog, that's what happens. You've just cheated on them. You broke the trust. All right? So three and four, do not correct the dog either or. You're taking it personal. Don't take it personal. And number five, go to the dog when you call it. Some people say they'll call their dog. The dog will sit there and wait for them to come to them. Uh-uh, there's a way to encourage the dog to come to you for love. Now, I understand that there might be emergency situations where you've chased a dog outside and you have to go to the dog to get it. That, I've done that before. But in those cases, you go to number four. Don't correct the dog. Even if you have to go to it, don't correct it. Take a deep breath. Understand that you got to go back to training. Take a deep breath. Don't lead with emotions. And then go from there, all right? It's not easy. It's not easy. It is very hard. Very, very hard. Now, let's talk about, uh, let's skip this for now. Let's skip the motivational ways. I'll do that for a reason. Do I have any questions on the mistakes, the five common mistakes that people make? Any questions about that? Because that's important. Uh, make sure... Uh, let's see, Barbara Ellen. Hi, Hector. Sorry to go off topic. You can address this afterwards. Yes, I'll, I'll address that afterwards, uh, Barbara Ellen. I'll go back. I will go back to that in the last 10, 10 15 minutes of my show. I do have a 2 o'clock appointment, so I do have to get done early. Uh, let's see, Athena is doing great at ignoring distractions outside of leash. Listen to my command. You got it, Mary Ellen. That's what I want to hear from Athena. That's what I want to hear. We had to change our method of training. I get that. And that's merited sometimes. Luckily, Athena handles stress with play. It's great to do that. You've got to have that control. Eventually, you don't have anything. Eventually, you just call the dog to you, and you got it. And you got it. No questions. Very, very good. All right. I'll address that, Barbara Ellen. The come command. Let's talk about some motivational ways of getting your dog to come and then go into some videos to help each other, all right? Then we'll go into some videos to help each other. 
All right, five motivational come command methods. Five motivational come command methods. Number one, walking backwards while saying the command. Now, why is that motivational? When you run, when you walk backwards and when you run, you get the dog excited. So you pump up the dog's blood. And then you're going to reward between the legs. Notice I said that. A lot of the times when I was training my puppy, Malo, people would watch me and they're like, that's how you got your dog to get so close to you. I, my dog gets arm's length away and then takes off running. I said, no, 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 no. Watch what I do. I'll do this out in public. I'll put the tree in between my legs or drop it in between my legs or it could be a ball. Doesn't matter. It could be a tree or a ball. Doesn't matter. It's a reward. And I drop it between my legs. This forces the dog to run almost through me to get the toy. And then I get such a tight come command. It is unbelievable. Okay? Unbelievable tight come command. All right. That's walking backwards saying the command. You want to hear the command come, and the dog wants to, you want to walk, have the dog walk backwards. So while you're walking backwards, the dog is hearing the come command, not running away. Number two, turn away walking or running long leash or off leash backwards with a tree or toy. This is what I do outside. I'll take it indoors and teach it off lead. And then I'll go outside and do off lead. And then I'll sh we'll show you with video. Don't worry. We got a great husky here with Hannah. Uh, Hannah, Noah, and Sam came to me. Great dog. And I'm going to show you how we did it with this husky. Five, five and a half, six months old husky. Off lead, come command outside. We did have to go through a learning curve, but we, we got that. Then we videoed. Number three, call the dog when you know it will come without fail. This is a good way to teach puppies the word come. Right before I feed, I know my dog's going to want to uh, come when I call it. So I'm going to say, come. Now the dog's going to get used to the word come and then run as fast as he can to get fed. This is what you can do to teach the concept of come. When you hear come, you come to me without fail. So get to know who your dog is. And then exercise that word come. Some dogs, they, want, they know when they're going to go for a car ride. Come. Some dogs know when they're going to start playing. Come. All right? Four, emergency safe come. You go to the, to the dog's level. When you go to the dog's level, psychologically, you're going to their level and you build trust and they come right to you. And then you grab them. All right, those are five motivational come command methods. Now, number five, that was four. This is number five. <laughs> you throw the tree. I'll show you what I mean by that. Mike did an excellent job uh, of doing this. He threw the tree, the, went and got, the dog went and got the tree, and then he called the dog back for a tree. All right, you're going to see how he does it. I'd I'd rather do it outside than indoors, but it works better in uh, it works better outside because the dog takes time looking for the tree and then you wait and then you call the dog to you so you'll get to see how it works really quick videos so those are five motivational come command methods five motivational come command methods walking backwards while saying the command reward between your legs turning away while walking long uh, long leash off leash backwards with the tree or toy all right call the dog when the, when you know it will come to you without fail Emergency save come, go to the dog's level, and then throw treats. Treat come, come, treat come game. You're going to see this. All right, let me make sure I don't have any questions here. Uh, Noah Ware, swear he replaced our dog with a better model. Hey, Noah, I didn't, I'm glad you're on here, Noah. Uh, Noah, I really am. Uh, I did it. <laughs> you, uh, that was funny, Noah. I uh, remember, I told you it wasn't going to take long. The hardest thing was just trusting me with the command. You get to see, you get to see Hannah here in a minute, Noah. I hope she's watching. Uh, let's see, Raphael, uh, train an emergency down when the dog is heading away from you rather than come command. Ah, good question, Raphael. Uh, train an emergency down when the dog is heading away from you rather than the come command. Um, 
that merited to be read again, Raphael. Uh, Raphael, whether you know it or not, you're one hell of a good trainer. Anyways, let's skip to the next topic. Listen, you're right. You can train. This is one thing I don't have on here. The emergency down command. Thank you. I'll add that to maybe the next time I do this, or it could be even a nice show. The emergency come command that Rafael is alluding to is when you say down, the dog drops, boom. Or for that matter, sit, boom. Some people have told me, Hector, my dog took off running. I said, sit, boom, the dog sat. Hector, my dog took off running. I said, down, boom, the dog downed. He's right. He's right. Thank you for adding that to my show. So emergency down or emergency sit could be used as a safety just like going down to the dog's level. Thank you very much. Very well said. All right. So let me make sure I don't have another question. Uh, what do you, uh, Lisa here, what do I do if the dog is running away if I can't call it? Lisa, what you try to do is not set yourself up to fail. That's what you try to do initially. Don't set yourself up to fail. Gain some reliability, gain some trust on, uh, on lead, off lead in a controlled environment, and then work your way. Now, if your dog has an impulse issue, which means chases squirrels, uh, when it gets outside, it doesn't listen, um, even with the, uh, uh, um, off lead, uh, with the uh, long leash, then we have to address the impulse control. Then we have to address off lead. Now we have to address the moral question. Does the dog learn no command? Now, you get some trainers who say never teach the dog no. Let me see your dog do an impulse control issue where he's chasing a squirrel and you call the dog back. Or for that matter, he's chasing to go bite somebody and you call him back. Because my dog can do that. Because he's learned impulse control. you damn right he knows the word no. That's a healthy boundary. It's a healthy boundary for us especially as kids to learn the word no, so we can deal with rejection when we get older. Very important. Something I had a hard issue with because I, I didn't learn it as a kid. You just learn punishment. That's not right. It's important to do that. All right, um, Adam Gulo. Good afternoon, brother. He made Society of Lake County, Florida, checking in. A little late, but I'll replay for sure. Most important command as far as I'm concerned. You are right, Autumn. It is one of the most important commands because it is a safety command. Second reason why, um, Adam, why it's very important. Second reason why it's very important. Because a lot of the times, why do we need to teach the dog to sit or down or stay? There are many times, and I mean many times, where people come to me and all they say is, I just want my dog to come to me when I call him, Hector. I don't care about the sit, stay, down. I just want him to come to me. And these are your chihuahuas. These are your King Charles Spaniels. These are your Papillons. These are your Pomeranians. Come on, people, really? Now, you do get some great trainers that, that teach that with, um, with those small dogs, but a lot of the people that come to me, I just want them to come to me and be submissive. Quit being so aggressive. That's it. But the come command is a huge safety issue. Very well said, Adam. Um, as far as the, uh, the come command being the most important command, do you give the come command once and wait them out? Um, Vicky, what I do for the come command is I will look at their body language as a response to see if they even, even go into. When we go to Hannah's dog, when we go to uh, Noah's dog, the husky, I'm going to um, remind me to show you body language to know that your dog's going to come to you. There's body language that your dog gives you to indicate that he's paying attention to you. So a reliable. So you may, there's nothing wrong with repeating the come command again. I know I've had to do that several times before. I, I, I call my dog and he, there's a battle. The squirrel, the me. The bad guy, me. Bad guy meaning bite work. Sometimes I do got to call him again. All right. So there might be that temptation of them to give me the finger. There might be the temptation for them to utilize their instincts instead of appeasing me or instead of obeying me. So in the face of that, you may have to repeat the command again. You're right. 
I can I completely agree with regarding the no. Duh, I need need not think of that. Uh, that's okay, Lisa. But this is why I wanted to qualify because a lot of trainers won't teach the word no. It's very it's a healthy boundary. You don't have to do that with a sensitive or meek dog. They 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 will they they'll be fine with that. You can call them back with a, with a treat because there is no there's no conflict with instinct. They're gonna obey you, sensitive meek and companion dog. But you get a strong-willed dog or a dominant dog, he's gonna give you the finger. He's gone. This is why 90% of the those dogs that come to me from other trainers are strong-willed dogs. This is why trainers who come to me, I won't mention the trainers' names, but they've came to me, they normally great trainers, but they've gotten a dog that's outside their element, and it's usually a strong-willed dog. Very strong-willed dogs. And I tell them, this is not a good competition dog. This is a strong-willed dog. This is a dog who's going to teach you more than competition would. This is the dog that's going to teach you patience. This is the dog that's going to teach you follow through. This is the dog that's going to teach you respect. This is a dog that's going to teach you consistency. This is the dog that's going to teach you more than any other dog can teach you. Don't avoid strong-willed dogs if you want to be a trainer. Very, very good mind mind playing those are like your con artist dogs they're strong will they're con artists let's go into the first video because you know i get talking i can't stop sometimes let's go into the first video where i talk about uh let's do the inside come command jennifer walks forward then walks backwards saying come and then say see how the dog gets excited He's getting excited to do the command. And that's what you want. And we give him love, not a treat. Vicky, this is why I focus on treats. I mean, I don't focus on, I focus on reward more than treats. The dog turns, comes to me, and I say, come. Very, very important. Again, I walk, I get the heel, I got the heel off leash, and then I call him. Now, I could do this indoors with the long leash, but you shouldn't have to. You shouldn't have to. But if you need to, that's fine too. Call the dog to you. Make the dog sit. Jennifer does a great job with her pit bull. Great job with this pit bull. All right? Let's do the um, emergency down command. Raphael, um, I wish I had a video for what you said uh, for the emergency uh, sit and emergency down. Just as you're listening, um, viewers, uh, Make sure that you focus on giving the command sit or down if they take off on you um, and they don't come. They don't understand the word come, but they will the sit or the down. Uh, and then again, reinforce the down command, emergency down, uh, reinforce it so much that when they hear it, they just do it. But let's talk about when you're squatting down. Darlene and her dogs, boy, did she give me a heck of a run for my money with her dog. little timid so we went down to their level we called them we give them some love you give them some love hands are for love remember that don't you dare discipline a dog with your hands hands are for love you go down to their level and you call them we got off leash we got them to uh we got them to listen darlene lapham we got them to pay attention we got him we got i think it was max uh, I think we got Max to, to be submissive, finally, and I hope Bill is happy. I remember him, <laughs> your husband. I hope he's happy now. I know I would have been frustrated with that dog. I know I would have been frustrated with that dog, darling. I know it. When you came in, I'm like, oh, my goodness. Woo! But he had the same issue that another dog did in my class, the pressure down. Somebody went really heavy-handed with that dog before you got him, darling. So what did I do? I taught him that my pressure was love. That I did that before I did anything. I got him on lead and I taught him pressure and then I taught him not to fight with me, with love. Once I did that, then we went to obedience. Then we went to the come command. Then they got really timid so I had to go down to the dog's level. Very important. Now this could be done outside or inside. I have done this with other dogs that I didn't know. I'd just tell the owner, go down to the dog's level, and then call it. And then they, the dog came to them. They didn't know who I was, but it worked. I knew it was going to work. I've done it before who dogs have gotten away. Uh, Peyton, 
Peyton's dog got away in my obedience class. The leash snapped outside. And then Peyton took off. I said, Peyton, just go down to the dog's level. Call the dog to you. The dog came right to him. Great dog, Peyton. Uh, Peyton and Alexis, I think it was. I'm pretty sure it was Alexis. Boy, she was something else. Anyways, them two uh, went down to the dog's level and they called the dog to him. Very, very important, you guys. Now, let's talk about the long leash. Sherry Martinez, you made it on, huh? I'm glad you made it on. Uh, let's see who else is on. If you're not showing that you're here, that's okay. Hello anyways, it's okay. I, I appreciate you here regardless if you don't wanna show yourself. Um, and anything, any questions, let me know. Listen, I don't know everything, I know a lot. Please, if you have anything to share, let me know. These go on YouTube and I'm getting feedback from around the world on some of my videos, especially the how to decompress your dog physically. Is that making its rounds or what? Woo, I love it. Good ripple effect that I'm getting with my video. So if you have any information, please share it just like Raphael did. All right, the next video, outside, off leash, loose. So we got Mike's dog, he's loose, off leash. He's got treats, he's running backwards, and he's calling the dog making him sit to get a nice tight sit. If he wants a tighter sit, he can see how the dog crunches up closer to him. If he wants a tighter sit, all he's gotta do is give the dog the treat on the bottom. But we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. Uh, let's see here. Here is Hannah. Hannah, walking up. The Husky, a little bit of a conflict. Why did the, why did the Husky have a conflict? He had a conflict because we just went through a learning curve. This dog got outside and wanted to just take off. Get, I'm gone. And we had to go through a learning curve. So Hannah walked, did the heel command, walked backwards. She's going to here in a minute. Right now we're just reinforcing the heel. Just so, so you guys can see the dog is healing off lead outside. It is hard to get a husky healing off leash outside. Very hard. We did it again with Hannah, walking backwards, calling the dog when the dog walks backwards. So she's saying, come, as the dog walks backwards. The dog is getting a nice, tight, sit command because the dog's expecting love with hands, not a treat, love with hands. Now, if it's expecting love with hands, it's going to want to get really tight and close to you. If it's expecting you to correct the dog, it's not going to come within arm's length away. If you broke the trust with the come command, it's not going to come off um, within arm's length. It doesn't trust you. This is why it's important the dog come to you and give it love. And Vicky, like I said, I don't do a lot of treats. I do a lot of love so the dog learns. I'm going to come to you. I'm going to get praised. Very, very important. Yes, a sensitive and meek dog, I will give him treats. I'll give him treats all day long. But a strong-willed dog or a companion dog, even a dominant dog, I'm going love. I'm going love, 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 so that when they come to you, that's what they get. And if they don't come to you, they get the no command. Very important. And Noah, that's the same dog you got when you came in. You know what I liked about that call is uh, Sam... Sam and Hannah, I was watching them in the corner of my eye when, when you were working them, Noah, and both of their jaws dropped when the dog started to listen. That's the kind of body language I like to see. Anyways, it was good. Very good to watch. Um, let's see. I, I got to see if I have any questions here. Uh, no questions that I can see so far. Mm. All right, let's go into the long leash come command. The long leash come command. I think it's this one. Here we go. We got Mike with his, with his dog here. Long leash. The dog gets to the end of it. He calls it, makes it sit, gives it love. We're going to do some other things. Same thing. Walking backwards. Long leash is there. He walks, runs backwards, calls the dog. Dog sees him. He runs, gives a treat between his legs. Look how tight the dog is between his legs. 
Don't you want the dog really tight right with you when you call it? I know I do. I want my dog like right tight up against me. I mean, right tight up against my body. So you can do it two ways. One, I, didn't, I don't have it on, in this way on my show. But remember, I give the treat between my legs or the toy, treat or toy between my legs, or I'll put the treat in my mouth, have the dog get really close to me and spit it in the dog. So that's how I got my dog to come to me really fast, right in front of me, and I gave it a treat. Now, this come command doesn't, ad doesn't address the return to heal command. This is just a come command. The dog hears a word, he comes to you. There's a command called return to heal, where the dog comes to you, then he returns to your heel position or between your legs, one of the two. All right, I like it between my legs so the dog's really tight up and close. And then if I have to use my hands for a defense or I have to, have to use my hands for a phone, I have it. That's one of the reasons why I have my dog between my legs. I can communicate better. I can function better. And if I have to do two things at the same time, like call the police, I know where my dog is is at the same time. My dog's not barking. He's right there between me. So come command. They hear the word, they turn and come towards you, and they sit. Now, some people say reward the dog as soon as he comes to you. Now, this is what I should have said in my mistakes. This is a common mistake that you can make with strong-willed dogs. If the dog is coming towards you and you praise it before it sits, it's going to get very excited before it comes to you, too excited that it doesn't sit. I praise my dogs after they finish the command. You notice with Hannah, she waited for the dog to sit, then she praised the dog. I didn't have her praise the dog as the dog was coming to her. Same with Mike. I didn't have him do that. All right? Same with Darlene. I didn't have it. Jennifer didn't do it neither. None of those people, they waited till the dog came to them, then they, pr they, they, they sat, then they praised. All right? Very, very, very important. All right? That was a mistake on my part not to add it to my, one of the mistakes is praising the dog before he sits. You want to teach the dog after you sit, that is, that is included in the come command. That the sit is included in the come command. Very important. Uh, let me see if I have a question. Uh, with a stubborn dog, I'm having issues with her not coming. When coming calls, she's busy sniffing the grass, and I think she's tuning me out. It takes about five tries, and she finally comes here. Um, try this command that I'm going to show you, Sherry. Um, this command is going to work for distractions in the grass uh, and, for, the, um, and for, uh, for a recall even. So try this command. This is the... Let's see. Here it is. The treat, you, Mike threw the treat, and the dog went and got the treat, got busy, and then he called the dog to him. So he threw the treat, the dog went and got the treat, and then the dog had to come back for another treat. So you're actually mirroring what you just said, Sherry. Great timing on your question. Right now the dog is sniffing, smelling. Come. He comes and then gives it a treat between his legs. If his dog was a little smaller, he wouldn't have to squat so much. <laughs> but nevertheless, great way to do it or in front of you, but at least the dog is right there sitting next to you. You notice Mike didn't praise the dog during the dog coming to them. He praised the dog after he sat. And that's very important to, to, uh, to be said again. If you don't praise the dog, if you do praise the dog before they sit, they get too excited and they tune out and they could take off running again. So I let them think that the sit command is included in the come command. Come and then sit. Both of those are included in the command. All right. I'm pretty sure that's going to help. Uh, Daniel, I tuck a tennis ball under my chin and drop it. Ah, Daniel. I forgot to mention that. Very, very good. Very good uh, added to my, to my show. What happens is what Daniel's referring to, first let the dog know that you have a tennis ball. You can throw the tennis ball, throw one. If he comes back, he knows that you're going to have a second one underneath your chin. 
and then you drop it, almost like my heel command, where I had the tennis ball under my chin or under my armpit. So, so you can do that. Very. Thanks for adding that, Daniel. Thank you. So you can do that, but first make sure the dog knows that you have a tennis ball there. Some people try it, and the dogs don't figure it out. Um, you can call the dog w just normally and just drop it underneath your chin and start the play. Like, for example, the dog, you, you put the tennis ball underneath your chin, you go outside. The dog's very ball, ball motivated. You drop the tennis ball, and he, that starts the engagement in the play in the tennis ball. In, in other words, the dogs learn that when you're going to go outside, the tennis ball is underneath your chin. So then the dog starts to learn to look under your chin or run up to you for the ball underneath your chin. Very, very good point. Very good. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. Uh, let's see. So those are the, the few methods that I'm going to, that I teach. The throw tree, I'll show it to you again if I can. Sometimes the screen deck is not cooperative. It is what it is. But anyways, uh, Mike threw the treat in the grass. The dog rushed to go get it, therefore got distracted. Then he waited. When the dog got the treat, he called the dog back to him. All right. It, what I would do too, Sherry, is do some, off, uh, some on lead obedience, off leash, excuse me, on leash, long leash obedience outside. That's what I would do in your backyard. A lot of the times, we as um, pet owners, we do training, but we don't do it where it really counts. Where it really counts is in our house. Where it really counts is in our property. And then it starts to carry over to other facets of their life, and it starts to carry over to other areas. Distractions. Very, very important, you guys, to do that. Um, do the follow-through at home. Do the follow-through at home where it counts. I know Noah, Noah, Sam, and Hannah, you're going to have to do it with that husky. We've taught him the concept of all the methods that we needed in class. Now carry that over at home. Same with Jennifer. She had an issue with the dog being too overly excited. Now remember, when the dog gets overly excited, he's also numb. His body's numb when he's excited and when they're aggressive, both. Their body's numb. In that case, you need a good recall. The dog has to come when you call it. It has to. It could be a safety issue. Like Adam said, one of the most, the, the most important commands to teach is the come command for safety reasons. He's right. He's right. So some other ones that you can go to the dog's level, call the dog to you. Very, very important. Okay, you got the long leash method where you run backwards on, on, uh, on the long leash for, for what your margin of error so he doesn't take off. Do that so much that maybe you might see a squirrel outside and then you, you're gonna, the dog's gonna be pulling at the end of that long leash. Now, if that happens, then you know you need to work impulse control. Then you need to work impulse control. There's several ways to work impulse control. That's a good show, isn't it? That's a good show, isn't it? Impulse control, something that a lot of trainers have a very hard time doing, impulse control. And I, on the heel command, it's even harder. That's why I got a, I got a show on how to train a dog not to pull. That's, I didn't say heel. I said not to pull. That show is called not to pull, not the heel command. The heel command is different. All right? So very, very important. Uh, Shane McBride, you've been here for a while. I haven't seen you. I'm glad you're back on. Pennsylvania, friend. Uh, glad you're here. Uh, this happens when it's her last potty time at night. Um, there's probably more distractions outside too, Sherry. So practice um, during the day. Practice, you know, you might have to practice a little bit more at night. More distractions. I think you, you have an invisible fence. So remember, an invisible fence doesn't stop wild animals, doesn't stop other dogs from going on your property and marking in your territory, ca causing you more distractions just a little harder. You're going against instinct. But your question is, how do I get my dog to do a recall? It's going to be very hard to use a shock collar on a recall when you already have an underground fence. Talk about confusion. It's going to be really hard. But, but, but there is, you, you, you have to address the impulse issue. Please do a show on impulse control. 
Uh huh. Hey, Tori, or everybody for that matter, impulse control. There's a lot of people in jail not controlling their impulses. <laughs> People go to jail for not controlling their impulses. And we're moral creatures. We're moral. Dogs are not moral. Impulse control. All right. I'll probably have to do that in July. Uh, Tori, at the beginning of my show, I indicated that I'm going to be doing two shows in June. Two shows. One at 12 and one at 7. All right. Two of them. One at 12 and one at 7. Both of them on Ask the Trainer. I'm not going to have time to help people because I am completely booked to my ears. Um, and for my mental health, I have to take a day off. For my mental health, I have to take a day off. I, was, I wasn't doing that um, during 2020, and my mental health went straight down. I was starting to get very stressed, and, um, and then something happened in, in that interim. Uh, something happened that really, really caused me to really – uh, say to myself, I have to, I have to pay attention to me more than anybody else. If I don't take care of myself, I can't help you. If I don't take care of myself, I can't help you. If I don't take care of myself, I can't train you in the way I want to train you. Self care is extremely important for our brains, uh, and for our mental health, uh, which is our brains, but it's very important. Men, it's not a bad word to say self care for us. Matter of fact, it's, it's, it's mandatory that we do that. So I have to take a few days off during the week. Um, and one of those days, I'm going to make it a way to decompress by just doing questions and answers, helping people that I can't normally help. I mean, I, talk as long as I have to, I mean, probably an hour, hour and a half. But I'm going to have, I'll, I'll talk about it towards the end, what I'm going to have people do. All right. So I'm going to go back to that question that I had from, I think it was Brenda. Um, give me one second. Oh, Barbara, that's what it was. Uh, fill your cup. There you go. Uh, br uh, let me go back to the Barbara. Barbara Ellen's got a question. Um, I'm counting down to my last 10 minutes of my show, so I want to make sure that I answer uh, questions outside the topic of my show. Anybody who, uh, Who's done the, uh, who wants to go back and watch my replay on the come command, it'll be, it'll be on my Facebook page and on YouTube. Uh, give me about a week. I forgot to download the down command, and I did that this morning. I still have to do that on YouTube, but I started the process. Um, hi, Hector. Sorry, uh, let's see. You can address. Uh, uh, Toby has a history of marking table legs in the house or when visiting in other homes. Hasn't done this since I've been working from home. Use belly bands when I have to go out for a bit. Now I'm getting new carpet. How can I avoid marking in the future? Um, we have to rule out any medical issue, Barbara. Uh, rule out any UTI. Rule out any kind of uh, 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 crystals that he yeah, could have in his bladder. Rule out and the crystals in the urine. Rule out any medical issue before you start addressing this. Now, what I would do is go back to basics with, with Toby, Barbara. Go back to basics. Go back to my flyer and how you would train a puppy. Even if you have to tie him to your hip. Go back to basics. Um, teach him that habit. Remember, you got to break a bad habit so you introduce the proper habit. So you're going to have to go right back to basics. Control the water intake. Put water in his food. Take him out after he eats, after he plays, and after he, goes, um, and after he uh, takes a nap. Those are the three times he's going to have to go. And you're going to have to make sure that you do that. Control his water intake. Now, some people will say don't do that because of dehydration. What I tell people is during the learning curve, teach yourself how to check for a dog to dehydrate. So you lift his skin up, you let go. If his skin comes down fast, you're good. If it goes down slow, he's dehydrating. But you're going to have to control his water intake during the learning curve. You have to. If not, you're just putting water in. It's got to come out. Rule out any kind of UTI or Medicaid issue, or you'll be fighting against that. And then go back to basics, Barbara. Maybe you might have to go to belly bands when you can't watch them. Maybe you're going to have to go to crate training when you can't watch them. Maybe you might have to do that. Don't catch him in the act 
If you catch him in the act of peeing, then he's going to learn not to go when you're around because you're correcting him when you catch him in the act. Your objective is to not correct him by creating a good habit. Creating a good habit. All right. I hope that helps. Patty, you made it. You're late, but you made it. Kristen, you made it. Good for you. Feed your soul. I didn't see you jump down. I'm glad you're here. Uh, Noah Weir, we definitely had it follow through some. Uh, good. You got it, though, Noah. The, the, the most important thing is teaching those good habits in your house now. Now that your dog knows boundaries, now you know how to follow through, Noah. Now you know how to follow through. You bet, Shane, burnout is a real thing. You bet it is. It is huge. The suicide rate for certain people's jobs is unbelievable. Law enforcement suicide rate is so high. And then, then, they, and then they get a second job. Oh, my God goodness. Wow. Then they become married to their job. Oh, it's just, it's crazy. Burnout. And then, and then the, the lack of love from their spouse that they give them, the lack of love from their family. They make money their God. They make, they make materialism more important than family. Oh, it's just a vicious circle. Vicious circle. I, you're going to go into my other talk. I don't want to. Anyways, well, I do, but I don't. Uh, you get what I'm saying, though. Uh, let's see here. You're welcome, Barbara Ellen. Good question. Uh, Mary Ladd, I'm here. All right, Mary. I'm glad you made it. Uh, my Shih Tzu is 13, and potty going is, is different. Ah, at, is it 13 years old or 13 months or 13 weeks? Uh, Mary, give me some feedback so I can give you some, some uh, feedback myself. Um, if it's 13 years old, you're thinking of maybe incontinence, all right? So you may have to go to a belly band. 13 weeks, you're going to have to go to teaching the good habits. Go back to my flyers. 13 months, you're going to have to teach the no command and then also teach them the habits like I just addressed with Barbara Ellen, all right? Years old, Mary, lad, then I would probably infer Mary, that he might be getting incontinence at, thir at 13. He, ha he may not have control of his bladder anymore. Um, touch, uh, touch base with your vet. A touch base with your vet, okay? Outside the scope of my training, outside the scope of my expertise, but my inference tells me incontinence, all right? Uh, anyways, good question, though. So next week, questions, ask the trainer. Ask the trainer next week. And then all of June, all of June, ask the trainer. Ask the trainer. Ask me as many questions. And even then, if I don't have a question, I'm going to fill in. I might fill in with some, some of my one-on-ones -on that I have. I might fill in um, with some of the ones who came to me and maybe tell you what we did to get this dog and maybe tell you what we did to help this dog uh, and then go, I think, you know what, I think I'm going to do that uh, with the owner's permission. I know I have three people that I cannot do. I have a politician, and then I have somebody with a non-disclosure form that I cannot. I wish I could. Oh, I wish I could, but I can't. But anyways, uh, I'm going to be, I'm going to be, uh, I'm, I think I'm going to be doing that. Maybe problem solving with a few dogs and help you, but also questions and answers. All your questions I'm going to try to answer, uh, whether puppies, adults, older dogs, that's what I'm going to do for an hour um, at 12 o'clock and also at 7 o'clock in June. Next week is going to be questions and answers. Ask the trainer. Now, I, I got a good topic today, which is impulse control. I got a good topic. That's a good one. That is a good one to do. I'm writing that down right now as we, as I do the show, impulse control, impulse control. I want to do a show on impulse control, um, but questions and answers for next week. Let me see what I got here. Rebecca, I can't wait to bring Duke into next month. Thank, you're welcome, Rebecca. Um, Rebecca, are you scheduled? Um, I'm, maybe I can, because I remember some, our conversation. Uh, if you're scheduled, it'd be a good one for the show. I'll be here for June. All right, Nicole, Nicole Reese, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here watching also. 
I didn't see you uh, sneaking in. I didn't see you sneaking in. Uh, do, do, do. Making sure I got everybody's questions. One of the worst things I, 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 I can do for myself is go back and I listen to my show and then I look and see that I missed someone's questions. Um, and and it's, it's really frustrating. Yes, and next month I'm submitted this morning. All right, perfect. Um, so again, all of June, ask the trainer, I have two shows, one at noon and one at seven. Now, here's what I'm asking of you as my viewers. I'm asking of you to let people know that I'll be doing that so I can help people with their pets. Like and share my videos. Like and share this, this video. Like and share the next one, the next post I put about Ask the Trainer. Any, any questions? Here's why. I was going to do a show on not returning your dogs back. But you know what? It is so complex that I want to do a show of Ask the Trainer. And if these people want to ask me a question, they can ask it then. Now, if you want to remain anonymous, send me a message through my Facebook, either through my uh, Hector Speaks, or my first class dog training Facebook, or you can ask, you can text me a question, just right on there, you wanna remain anonymous. Listen, I had a case the other day where a guy was very, very heavy handed with his dog. My job wasn't to report him, my job was to help him so it doesn't happen anymore with his dog. This guy felt extremely remorseful, he just didn't know how to fix his problem. Luckily, his dog didn't care that he was very forgiving and it didn't work. His hands on didn't work, but it's still, it was still a good opportunity for me to teach him other things, um, about anger, about self-control, about, uh, talking about what you're dealing with. Come to find out he was having a relationship issue that was affecting the way he was treating his dog. Have fun with that one. So this is why when I have people like that, I say, listen, you got to go talk to somebody about your issue to help you at other facets of your life. So I'm, um, I was going to do that, but then I decided, let me just do as the trainer show. And I'm going to, and I think that's going to help more. If you want to remain anonymous, then send me a text, 517-712-5012. All right, send me a text. Just tell me you want to remain anonymous and send me a question. Message, same thing. I want to remain anonymous. Send me a question, and I'll, and I'll, add, uh, and I'll say the question online, live. Uh, or email michigandogtraining at gmail.com. All spelled out. Michigan spelled out. michigandogtraining at gmail.com. My job is to help people. My help people. Get the ripple effect. Get you to keep your dogs. Get you to not be so... Um, not so frustrated with a dog, especially a puppy. You, got, you guys, when you get a puppy, that's a puppy phase. That's a honeymoon stage. That's a loving stage. This is the time you're supposed to be really having a lot of fun. And some of the people come to me, they get frustrated with a puppy. All right? You don't want that to happen. Uh, always a great show. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Mike. Good job today. Good job today, Mike. And then me and Mike have a meeting to do some other videos uh, for my dog bite prevention. Woo! Some dramatic videos there. Anyways, great show today. I can't tell you how much I love the fact that you spent your time here. Time is the most valuable thing that you can offer me because that's something that money cannot buy. Think about that. Billionaires would love to have more time. All right? Billionaire, millionaires would love to have more time. That's something that you cannot buy. You cannot buy. So I appreciate that. I love you for it. I love you for passing on my ripple effect. Share my videos. You don't even have to like them. Share them. If you don't want to share them, at least watch them and share my information. I know trainers are doing that because I'm listening to other trainers talk. I love the fact that they're listening to this. All right? But don't be afraid to give me some constructive criticism also. All right? I'm, it doesn't bother me. I had uh, the same person from Oregon 
I won't say her name. There's no need to. Uh, she started to criticize me again on Facebook. You guys, it's okay. I learn from people that way. And you, you guys are not stupid when you, when you watch, when you, when, you, when you read that stuff. You're not stupid. You're going to dissect what's being said. Come on. You know better than that. Anyways, great show today. I can't, I can't tell you how much that I want to address to get to know who your dog is, not what your dog is. Who your wife is, not what she is. Who your kid is, not what they are. Who your dog is, not what it is. Please, carry that over. That's my, that's my show today for the Come Command. I appreciate it. We'll see you next week, same time, for Ask the Trainer. Ask the Trainer. I love you, and I mean that. <laughs>